Hi there, DW Berman here again with another little LightWave mini tutorial. Last week on New Tech's LightWave forum, there was a uh, question about um, building a honeycomb grid by Galadrim. I guess that's how you say his or her name, and I'll just continue saying him uh, for simplicity's sake. Anyway, he wanted to uh, make a grid that had some kind of thickness and depth to it, but building it out of actual geometry was proving to be too much for his computer, and uh, there were lots of good suggestions and uh, alternate ways of doing things. Eventually I came up, I suggested doing instances, and I think that's what he actually ended up going with. But uh, let me show you how to do that today. So uh, first we're going to start off by making the honeycomb shape itself, just the, the one individual cell of the honeycomb. So let's go to create, and I'll go to disk. You could also use ball for this. And uh, let me just put it in the middle and drag it out here. Hit N for numeric. And N is in Nancy. And it was six-sided. And we want the center to be zero and the radius to be one meter. This would be a really big B, and I'd be very much afraid of it. It's like, you know, it's on the scale, perhaps slightly smaller, but on the scale of the B that killed the... Planet Express crew at one point. Anyway, here is my starting point. I just have this one meter disc that is a six-sided disc, okay? Let's flip to top view here to make it a little easier. I'm going to copy this and then and so control C to copy and control V to paste and T for move. And at some point in the light wave 11 uh, series they changed uh, the lightwave group changed the way copying and pasting works so now when you paste the pasted copy is selected okay so let's uh, let's attach these two together not necessarily attach but we want this new one to be right next to the old one and the easiest way to do this I'm guessing is also a light lightwave 11.5 tool uh, under the modify, under translate, and it'll be axis translate. So I'm just going to click on this vertex and drag it to that vertex. And there we go. It's in position. Hit enter, and it's done. So select both of these, copy, paste, T for move. Going to do the exact same thing with this one. Just kind of rough it into position. Then use axis translate, and boom, boom. That's done. Enter. And hey, look, it's actually on the right line there. I wanted that bottom edge to be on that origin line. So with Lightwave, if nothing, if every, if nothing is selected, then everything is selected. So let's go to Modify, Align, Center, Center, X. So there we go. We have it centered on the X. And actually, I didn't want that. <laughs> I didn't want this line to be centered on the origin. I wanted this line down here. So let me move, just move that up and zoom in until it's right on that line. Now I can go to the multiply, thanks Jarek, and do mirror Z after I have this top set selected. Mirror Z. And there we go. That's what I want. Hit M for merge. And just to be on the safe side, I'll click fixed, although it shouldn't really matter. 14 points eliminated. Okay. so. There we go. Just in case anything was off slightly, it's it, they're all solid now. Okay. Next thing I want to do is I want to go to the next layer and put the first layer in the background. I want to make a box this time. A box. Shift X to make a box because that's how we roll. We put the keyboard shortcuts based on the last letter of the thing we're making. This can actually be a little outside the edges on the top, but I, I want this these uh, horizontal ones, or this uh, on the x-axis, to be right down the middle of these cells. So let me hit N, N for numeric, and I want to make sure it's 3 meters by 3.5 meters, and make a box. Okay, flipping back to the first layer, select all of these. I will need them to be selected, even though the first part of this operation would be fine if I just did a, a bevel. I actually want, you know, if nothing was selected, I actually want to delete these things. So I'm just going to hit bevel, and I'm just going to hold down control, and I'm going to click and drag to the left. So the control, holding down control constrains it, so I'm not actually moving it up or down. 
So there we go. I say I want the walls of these cells to be about that thick. And I just let go of everything and now I just press the delete key and it's got rid of all that geometry. If I switch to the perspective mode, you can see what we're dealing with. Okay, now with all that done, I'm going to hold down control. Nope. Control E. Nope. Shift E, or Shift R rather. Shift R for template drill. I thought it was Shift R, but then I got confused. Okay, Shift R, template drill. What this does is this uses whatever geometry is in the background layer to cut through whatever is in the foreground layer based on these different operations. In this case, I want to do core, so I'm going to take the core of the object and hit OK. It's kind of like intersect, I guess. So you'll notice we have these little extra tabs here. I don't want those, so I'm going to deselect those extra tabs. And by deselect, I mean I'm going to select them and then delete them. It's amazing how when you say things, they don't come out right sometimes. Um, I could kind of leave this like that, but I, I want to clean this geometry up a bit. So let me just select this and this and that. Hit Shift Z to merge those polygons, deselect those, and then do those. Same thing there, and just kind of select around the outside, making sure I get all of the polygons, and there we go. Now, next step, Shift E for extend, or rather extrude, extrude. If you bevel just straight up, you won't have any back face on the polygons. However, if you shift E to extrude and then extrude away from the polygon normal, the part that's facing up, you will get a bottom cap as well as the top cap. And uh, holding down control constrains it to the perfect axis. So there you go. There's what we have. As a nice little added touch, I'm going to bevel these edges, and I can do that rather quickly. So let me go to the uh, edge select mode. I'm going to lasso the top edges, and I'm just going to lasso the ends, the edges of the box, to just kind of deselect all of the outside ones. And I'm also going to left click on these other ones, because I don't need to bevel these middle polygons, or the middle edges. And now with that done, control B to chamfer and just drag to make the bevel. And if I really wanted to, I could probably do that again to you know, round it out. But I don't want to do that. I was undo. Okay, so that's that's the finished one. Looks like I have extra point there in the end, which I don't need, but that's okay. I'll just leave it, and I'll save honeycomb. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. I saved it. Now send the object to layout, and here it is in layout. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it off. Since I'm going to be instancing it, I don't need to see the original. So scene slash dope editor or scene editor. I'm just going to uncheck both of these. I don't need to see the layer I used to cut away the background. So honeycomb layer 1 is our primary object. Control N to make a new null object. Click on properties to open the object properties. That's what the object properties looks like. Instancers, the last tab on the end there. Instance generator, double click it, that opens it up. Add an object, this is what we want to make multiple copies of. In this case, it's going to be honeycomb layer 1. And the type is going to be rectangular array. You notice it's already crazy. I only want one instance on the Y. I only want it to be thick like that. So, so let me switch to perspective to view. Now we need to line these things up. If I turn them on, uh, you'll see what the problem is. They're all kind of overlapping, and we don't want that overlappingness. Um, so let's change the X spacing to 3, because our thing was 3 meters wide, the box we made to cut it away. And the box we made to cut the Z was 3.5, although, if you recall, it was a little bit less than 3.5, so we're getting a gap in there. So let's switch back to bounding box mode so we can see this 
more clearly. Uh, think 3.46. Actually, let, let's go back directly to this so I can sh see show you how I got that number. So back in the modeler, control G to select points. I'm going to select the points on the ends there because we're trying to get the distance between these two points. So let's uh, select the top, the points in the top view and just kind of deselect the bottom one. So now we're only working with two points in the top. We have two points selected. Under the detail, we have a measure section. And under measure, we have measure points, and that tells us the exact distance between these two points. And it's 3.46.41. So let's just do that, 3.46.41. And now we should be perfectly lined up on the z-axis as well. So let's switch to VPR so you can see, hey, there's our honeycomb. How about that? Switch back, back, switching back to the shaded solid. Properties, I don't know why I closed that. Let's change my preview mode to shaded solid again. Okay, so now with this done, let me zoom out. Notice as I zoom in and out, they flicker. That's because they are not actual geometry. They are just instances. And let's root. Oops, I'll just hide that. Okay, rotate that around. If we want more, if this is not enough, we need this to be much bigger. We can make it much bigger by just changing the number of instances on the Z and on the X. We can make it a very large number of instances on the Z or the X. Perhaps too many. <laughs> I'm just kind of punching in numbers randomly here. But yeah, you can easily change the number of instances. We can also change the thickness of the instances. That looks like a preview glitch. Nope, I accidentally clicked on Y instances. I don't want any instances on the Y, just one. We can also change the thickness by going to the stretch and say changing it to uniform, and then we can make them thinner or thicker. Um, this also changes the bevel since it's a general stretching of the entire object. If you need the bevel to stay the same, you can put an endomorph, or you can put a morph on the original object. Um, just uh, lasso the bottom points and drag them down and make a morph target of that, or the other way around. And then if you morph the original object in layout, it will change the thickness of this. Uh, and that, I think, is where I'm going to leave it. Oh, one more thing. Let's so say you need these to be actual real geometry, and you notice I turned it down because this will take a little while. Uh, if you need these to be actual geometry, there is a script in Lightwave that comes with it. Um, I don't. You can look around in the menu if you want, but if you go to the Python, click on the Python button, and you go to the uh, the folder that comes with Lightwave under Support, Plugins, Scripts, Python, Layout. Is it generic? It was generic. There's a bake instance Python script, and you hit open, and uh, I didn't have the right object selected. You need to have the original object selected, the thing that has been instanced. Click on Python. There we go. We'll run it again. It remembered the file path, so that makes it easy. And there we go. We now have, let's see, 101 copies of this object in the scene. Uh, that takes up a bit more memory, but there you go. They're there if you want to. There is a script. There are scripts you can get to um, export a bunch of objects in, or an entire Lightwave scene into one object in Modeler. Uh, it's a two-part script. Uh, both of the ones I'm aware of are two-part scripts. You run the script in Lightwave, and then you run it in Modeler. Um, you can find those on the Lightwave plugin database. Uh, thanks for watching. I if you liked it, like the video, subscribe to the channel so you can see updates whenever I post new tutorials like this. Also, check out my full-length tutorials at liberty3d.com. You'll notice right now we are having a three-year anniversary sale. Um, so for the, for the month of July in 2013, you can save 30% on your purchase at liberty 3 d by using the coupon code Big July, you can see it down here. Big July. Uh, this discount does not apply to 3D Coat, the application, but it applies to just about everything else. So, thanks for watching, and have a great day.